Good morning, everyone. I'm Vijoy, and I'm here to talk about the power of yet. Think about the first cell phone. I'm sure it didn't look anything like what you have in your pockets right now. But at the time, it was revolutionary. Now, this thing that you have in your pockets is not just a phone anymore, is it? It's a phone, a computer, a TV, a clock, a radio, a camera, an assistant, and so much more. Let's welcome Frida. Frida is a really busy person, and she would like to open up a bank account. Before this transformation happened, she would actually have to call up the bank, drive up to it on the day of the appointment, talk to a person, horror of horrors, talk to multiple people, fill out some paperwork, wait a few days, and then she would get her bank account created. Now all she needs to do is to whip out her phone, tap with a few fingers, and voila, the bank account is created. The entire experience has transformed, but it took a whole set of technologies to make this happen, from the network, to compute, to the device, to the operating system, to the UX, the interfaces, you don't have a keyboard and a mouse anymore, to the way apps are developed, deployed, and consumed. All of that to make that magic happen. Now, we are at the cusp of yet another transformation. The evolution from the API and app economy to the experience economy. The experience economy will be defined by immersive experience across our physical, augmented, and multiple virtual realities. These will be driven by well-known B2C use cases that you might be familiar with, such as social, whether it's fashion or travel, entertainment, gaming, or concerts, as well as transformational B2B use cases such as digital twins for healthcare and finance, or simulations for manufacturing and design, as well as collaboration and education to power our future of work. Imagine what Frida's banking experience could look like in this new world. Unfortunately, the tech stack to enable this experience for Frida isn't there yet. Just like the previous transformation, we need to solve for a whole slew of familiar problem spaces, such as the network for volumetric data, computing, preferably edge computing, the operating system, the device, the, the, the UX, the interfaces you can't tap anymore, as well as the way apps are developed, deployed, and consumed. But there are also a whole set of new use cases that we need to solve for, or problem spaces. For example, persistent identities across our avatar and real selves. Spatial indexing and spatial protocols and the interoperability between all of these metaverses and experience economies. To driving security, ethical AI, and responsible AI for the safety and well-being of our multiple digital identities. That's where we come in. We are Cisco's emerging tech and incubation, and we are solely focused on what's yet to come. We want to solve the hard problems one step at a time, starting with solving for the experience economy that allows for us to not be looking at a device, but be actually immersed in the device. To thinking about the security and safety of our digital identities in this new future and imagining that the next generation of quantum internet is going to carry both classical as well as quantum information in the same packet, to realizing that all modern applications are going to run over the wide open internet, and to solve for the challenges that that poses. With that focus, we are leaning towards what's yet to be the future of modern apps and edge native computing, because that's step number one to solving for the experience economy. To enable modern applications, we need to allow developers to pick and choose the APIs that they need from any provider, internal or external, discover them, connect them, deploy them, scale them out, scale them back, lifecycle manage them, and we call that app connectivity. As we just saw, all modern applications are going to run over the wide open internet. What is perimeter security in that world? We really need to secure API to API interactions as well as API to data object interactions. 
That's app security. Finally, if something does go south, and you know that will, we need API and app level observability to ensure that your SLO budgets are kept intact. And these capabilities should be available to you wherever you are in your cloud journey. You might be solely focused on a singular public cloud, like an AWS or a Google or an Azure, or you could have a multi-cloud application architecture that spans public cloud, on-prem assets, edge assets, as well as SaaS APIs. But enabling the experience economy is also synonymous with managing large data sets. These data sets are being created close to the user, close to the device. And paradoxically, this is exactly where networking, compute, and storage resources are also very scarce. So solving these challenges is going to be key to enabling the experience economy. As we build out these capabilities, we partner deeply with the ecosystem around us. In the last year alone, we have sponsored more than 150 research projects with specific world-class universities and specific faculty to solve some of these challenges with us. We have released and launched, as well as contributed to a whole slew of open source projects in the areas of API and app, connectivity, security, and observability, as well as solving for distributed AI and ML and edge native computing. Finally, we have a team, a global team, that works hand in hand with local governments, startups, and customers to co-innovate with us as part of a design partner program. But are distributed systems and edge native computing really the future of the experience economy? Let's hear from Stephen Elliott from IDC and see what he has to say about this. Business and IT executives now realize that the technology architecture has become their business architecture, one that is application and transaction dependent. Hybrid work and digital business have elevated the need for high performing applications that deliver great employee and customer experiences. The Cisco ET&I team is involved in several key areas of application modernization, security, and edge that are foundational for modern operating principles that drive business using technology today and in the future. These journeys use applications as their foundation. According to IDC's research, in 2021, there were 195 million logical applications worldwide. By 2025, this will grow to 750 million logical applications. Business success is now being defined by how well organizations develop, manage, and secure application architectures for competitive advantage. These transformations for customers are complex with a mix of classic and modern, cloud native container and Kubernetes based approaches. By the end of this year, we will have 3 billion containers deployed worldwide. This will grow to about 6.5 billion by the end of 2025. As enterprises modernize their applications and cloud platforms, securing those applications has never been more important. To help solve these challenges, enterprises are using DevSecOps practices and considering security earlier in the software development lifecycle. Known as shift left practice, this is driving an increase in collaboration across development, operations, SecOps, and infrastructure platform teams, driving tool consolidation strategies while improving a company's security posture. These are hot areas as IT and business leaders recognize applications and APIs are the fabric of modern business and for critical competitive differentiation. Another area of complexity is deploying the same cloud native applications at the edge. The edge is playing a critical factor in collecting, analyzing, and exchanging data with customers. IoT, AIML, supply chain, and 4 and 5G are all major drivers in enterprise interest in the edge. Now, as this slide shows, IDC research indicates that the amount of data generated over the next five years is expected to be at least 2.2 times the amount of data generated over the past 10 years, and nearly three times the amount of data generated in the previous five years. Data growth from 2021 through 2026 represents a CAGR of 21.2%. The operations, management, data governance and compliance, rendering, security and caching are all important edge considerations. In summary, IDC sees that modernizing applications and edge are the key frontier and transformations for many enterprises over the next three to five years. 
3 billion containers by the end of the year. That's staggering, and 6.5 by 2025. Anyway, let's test this hypothesis with a simple feature. Not a full-blown app, but a simple singular feature. Please welcome back Frida, who is now getting familiar using her phone to do all of her banking. But since the COVID pandemic, she has been a little apprehensive about using an ATM to withdraw cash. She would really like for that experience to be touch free. Is there a way to make the entirety of the ATM cash withdrawal process completely touch free? Pretty straightforward ask. What she would like to do is locate an ATM, drive up to it, enter the amount that she would like to withdraw on her phone, get authenticated through the phone and the background checks that are happening on the ATM, out pops the cash, and yes, the only thing that she needs to touch is the cash when she, when she picks it up. Simple, seamless, touch-free. Now let's take this a step further. Let's imagine that we have AI algorithms running on the ATM cameras at that location and at every ATM location that the bank owns. And that algorithm is constantly monitoring the surrounding area for safety concerns and constantly rating the ATM's safety score. This score is presented to Frida when she's trying to locate the ATM that she would like to drive up to. Again, pretty straightforward ask. But if you think about the messiness that exists behind making this digital journey possible, it isn't seamless yet. If you think about what a developer has to go through to enable this digital journey, they need to pick and choose APIs, connect them, secure them, measure and observe them across mobile front ends, maybe a singular cloud backend, maybe the customer data resides on a SaaS portal somewhere, transactional systems might be sitting on-prem, maybe even in a mainframe for that matter, and then talking to edge APIs at the branch location to ensure that there is consistency in place when she withdraws the cash. All of these APIs, again, need to be discovered, secured, and observed. This experience becomes even more complicated to deliver at the edge. Essentially, we would like to run a deep learning human behavior analytics or HBA application on the camera at that ATM location. And again, at every ATM location that the bank owns. We would like this HBA app to be simple to manage, deploy, and lifecycle manage around it. So that a bank manager can manage not just this app, but every other application sitting at their location. Simply, preferably using a no-code paradigm. This was a bank example. Now you can think about other examples in other verticals, such as automotive, healthcare, retail, and so on and so forth. To enable these scenarios and these digital journeys, we are introducing three new SaaS services today. You might have heard a couple of these in the keynote today, in the morning. But these services are Callisti, which is focused on the discoverability, connectivity, and scale up, scale down of APIs, no matter where they are, using the Istio service mesh uh, project. Next up is Panoptica, which focuses on API application and cloud native workload security. The third is Telescope, that focuses on API and service layer observability to ensure your SLOs are intact. Finally, we are also introducing Great Bear. This is a SaaS application for simple, scalable edge ops, and it's available to you for co-innovation via the Design Partner Program. Let's dive a little bit deeper into all of these capabilities, and for that, I would like to welcome Desi Harvey to the stage. Desi is from ETNI, but she's playing the role of the CIO of the Agile Bank, where Frida has been a customer. Desi? Thank you, Vijoy. It's great to be here today. So we talked a little bit about Frida and her experience, but I want to introduce to you a new customer, Martin. So 
Martin's in San Francisco. He's looking to get some cash for his weekend activities. So he takes a look at his phone, tries to locate a safe nearby ATM. So he drives over to the Pine Street branch where your Edge AI algorithm is, is used with the cameras that are there to continuously monitor the area for anomalous activity and ensure a safe location. So during his process, Martin parks his car, opens his phone, signs into his application, requests his withdrawal, and heads over to the ATM, all from the comfort of his car. He gets up to the ATM, where the camera's looking at him. He's NFC authenticated. And from there, he's able to withdraw his $500. Now, this seems very modern and exciting. But as you see, it's been a simple, easy, and quick opportunity for him to get this money out. However, <laughs> what I'm curious is if you could give me a little bit of information about what's happened behind the scenes to ensure this safe experience for Martin. Absolutely. And I think for that, what we would like to do is first figure out how the ATM branch is prepped to enable this experience for Martin. And for that, what the branch manager would like to do at the Pine Street branch is install two applications. The first one is for user authentication using NFC and cameras. And the second one is the human behavior analytics or HBA app to ensure the safety of that ATM location and score that safety rating for the ATM. So for that, we launched Great Bear, which is the SaaS portal for simple, scalable edge ops. And as you can see, it comes up with, a, with an app store. And those are the two apps that the branch manager would like to deploy. He zooms in into San Francisco, picks the Pine Street location, and goes ahead and wants to deploy an application. All of these applications in the App Store are vetted by IT, so they are safe and secure. Picks the HB app, and with one click of the button, is able to deploy it at the ATM location. He does the same thing with the NFC user authentication app. Goes to the App Store, picks the user authentication app, and you'll see in a minute, it's a simple one-click deploy and it's actually deployed at the Pine Street location. Seamless and simple. Yeah, I've actually had several branch managers who can use this and installed it without the help of IT. But can you tell me a little bit about more about what's happening behind the scenes of the applications? Absolutely. And so now, one of the, since these applications have been installed, let's take a look at the rest of the digital journey. And for that, we would first like to bring up the Callisti screen. Callisti is our service mesh manager. And it gives you a bird's eye view of every microservice that's running behind that digital experience that is enabling Martin to do a touch-free cash withdrawal. In this view, you'll see that the, the, the whole digital experience is a multi-cloud deployment. On the bottom right is a set of microservices that deal with the location of the ATM and the safety rating of the ATM. And those are running on EKS on AWS. The rest of the digital journey is actually running on Google Cloud. So you will see that Martin starts from the bottom right and then moves to the top as he goes through this entire digital journey. Also, what you would no notice is that each microservice is being represented by a green bubble. That tells you that these services are up and healthy. They'll turn red if something goes wrong. The link between those microservices will give you the average request per second rate of flow between those microservices. And so, for example, you would see that between the locator service and the customer accounts, we have an average rate of zero because that's really a low bandwidth control plane link at layer seven at HTTPS. So let's start with Martin's journey through this entire example. It starts from the bottom right, which is the ATM location, moves up to the top, he's located it, and then we are getting into customer accounts to authenticate Martin's bank account. Well, what, what does a red circle identify? That is a good question. So something definitely is going wrong. And what you see is that the rate of request per second between the locator and the customer accounts, which is supposed to be on average zero, has shot up to 70. And that is causing the account's microservice to get overwhelmed. And that's causing it to turn red in terms of SLOs. So something definitely is amiss 
in this entire picture. To dig deeper, let's figure out what's going on. Because at the Callisto layer, you can only see what's going wrong at the SLO level. But if you want to dig deeper and look at the payload, we will launch Telescope for that, which is our observability tool. Think of it as a wire shark for all of your layer seven traffic. And it has powerful search capabilities. In this case, the search was pretty straightforward. We used the locator service. We come to that, we see the familiar service view. We see that link between locator and customer accounts turning red. We double click on that and we can look at the payload. When we look at the payload, we find something really interesting. We find that the error code is 403 or forbidden. And the payload is carrying a user ID of unknown and a bank ID, which is quite bogus. So something fishy is really going on. Yeah, this is extremely concerning. Does this mean that we have a security attack happening? This possibly is a security attack happening because especially if you look at the forbidden error code and the user ID and the branch ID, that's not normal. That's not something that you would expect to happen. So to figure out whether there is a security attack and what can we do about it, let's launch Panoptica, which is the security, API security and application security tool. So launching Panoptica, we will be thrown into the same familiar service level view. We will see all of these services, the locator and the accounts, and how they're connected at the flow level. But we also see this spurious connection between locator and an unknown API provider from example.com. And that's actually what we're getting alerted on within Panoptica. Because the policies in your bank have been set up to alert on an unknown API. So if you look at that, that's what Panoptica is doing. So we'll go back and we'll see what the hell is going on. And suddenly we'll see the locator and the accounts also being alerted on. So there is somebody trying to enter from example.com, hacking into ATM locator and then trying to hack into customer accounts. And that's why we are getting that alert. Digging in deeper, we can find out what the potential attack vector could be. And on this screen, we'll find out that it's a potential broken object level authorization or a broken function level authorization attack that might be going on. These are pretty serious API vector attack vectors. And we should be trapping them, and we see that Panoptica is actually trapping them. So now that we've identified this, what can we do about it? So your organization has set these policies where we actually alert on unknown API access as well as BOLA and BFLA attacks but we would ideally like to block them. So we can just do that by a simple click of the button where we can change that alert to a block. And mind you, this is not blocking the entire traffic flow. It's only blocking those suspicious flows. So that's what you see here. Those suspicious flows have now been blocked, which actually should enable that customer account service to actually turn green and allow Martin to proceed safely. And we can see that in Callisti where we see Customer accounts is actually green now. The rate of request has gone back to an average of zero. Everything is hunky-dory. Wow, this is fantastic, Vijay. I really appreciate you building these applications to work together to create such a seamless experience for Martin and all of my customers. And he clearly is able to get off on his weekend journey in San Francisco. Thank you so much. Thank you, Desi. So as you've seen, we would like you to lean with us into what's yet to be the future of modern apps and edge native computing, because that is going to power the experience economy. We are not intimidated by yet. We actually seek it out. We are Cisco ETNI, and we are betting on what's yet to come. If you want to see what's behind all of the bets we are making, please point your cameras to the QR code. That will take you to eti.cisco.com. We can learn a lot more about these products, but also a lot about the research and the technologies that we are working on to power these uh, products. You can try, try these products out for free by going to those URLs. Please follow us at Cisco Emerge on Twitter and check us out at booth 1274. There will be stickers, so check us out. Thank you. <laughs>